the Frank Lloyd Wright living room was built overlooking Lake Minnetonka outside of Minneapolis. From the window, you would see a distant view of the lake and lots of sky. The room is so permeable that you are almost outdoors. So while you feel protected and safe, you also are almost in a large tent in the woods. This was sort of my first step into modernism, which after this I began to appreciate more and more. Wright had gone to Europe. His designs became simpler. The chairs and the tables have no moldings. They tend to be a lighter wood. It's using very much just the vocabulary of line rather than the vocabulary of naturalistic forms. This is the only room, I would believe, in the period rooms that actually had electricity. There's this technological change that's happening. Mrs. Little was trained as a pianist in Cologne, was apparently quite good, and wanted to use this room for dual purposes, both to have the family live there and use it and enjoy it. But her piano was always firmly planned as part of the room. She always meant to be able to give small concerts. Although it's probably about 14 feet high, it comes off as low horizontal room. You're both in a space that feels comfortable, but at the same time feels very grand. Wright is working with piercing every wall and trying to get light from all directions. A lot of people do think that the skylight is the sky. It isn't a skylight. It's a light fixture. He intentionally made the living room a freestanding pavilion. The most important room in the house is going to be its own structure. It's a country house. You're there to relax, and the space somehow transmits that. It is a room that engenders great relaxation, great calmness, great peace. I don't think there's any other room that I know that makes me feel quite like this. This is a work of art meant to be lived in.